Hey everyone, today I will bring you a survival thriller film directed by Claudio Fa and released in February 2024. It is No Way Up. The story follows a group of airplane crash survivors trapped underwater in a sunken plane. They must find a way to escape the wreckage while facing dwindling air supplies and dangers lurking in the depths. Can they overcome the odds and fight their way back to the surface? Okay, without further ado, let's dive into the recap. In the vast expanse of the ocean, a woman's body plunges into the water, floating momentarily before her eyes snap open in terror. Brandon suddenly awakens at this moment, realizing it was just a nightmare. He works as a bodyguard for the governor's daughter, Ava, having been burdened by guilt from failing to protect Ava's mother. Today, Brandon's duty is to escort Ava on a trip. Brandon and Ava meet up at the airport with her friends, Jed and Kyle. The group is off on a journey together, though the boys are displeased with Brandon's presence. Ava explains that her father insisted on her having security. Once on the plane, Ava and her friends take seats in the back for some privacy. Ava notices that the flight seems unusually empty. Shortly after takeoff, the plane experiences a mild shake, which is deemed normal. Moments later, the plane shudders again, and the engine shows signs of overheating. The flight attendant reassures the passengers that they merely collided with some birds, and there's no cause for alarm. However, the plane starts to shake again, and the left engine ignites. The pilot instructs everyone to fasten their seatbelts. Panic sets in as the left engine detaches, crashing into the side of the plane and killing a passenger. The impact causes a pressure change, sending everything inside the aircraft flying and causing the overhead bags to fall and injure the passengers. Passengers who haven't fastened their seatbelts are hurled from their seats and thrown around the plane despite their attempts to hold on. Within moments, a wall blows out, creating a massive hole in the side of the aircraft, causing many to be sucked out to their deaths. Brandon tries to save a man drifting towards the opening, but the force of the wind is too powerful and the man is pulled away. Another man clings desperately to the seats, but the metal eventually gives way and he falls out with the seats together. A stewardess attempts to help another passenger, only to fall out alongside him. With most of its passengers lost, the plane plummets rapidly and crashes into the ocean, where water immediately begins to flood in. A piece of metal impales Brandon and the force of the impact pushes the seats forward, crushing many remaining passengers. The plane continues to sink for several minutes before resting on the seabed. Due to the angle at which the plane is stuck, an air pocket forms at the aircraft's rear. Ava, her friends, and flight attendant Danilo survive, though Kyle suffers a broken arm. The group anxiously watches the water, troubled by the strange noises they hear. Suddenly, Brandon emerges, bringing Rosa and her unconscious grandmother, Marty, to safety. Danilo begins performing chest compressions on Marty, and after several tense minutes, she regains consciousness. Rosa then inquires about her grandfather, and Brandon has to break the sad news that he didn't survive. Panic starts to set in among the group, so Brandon takes charge to calm everyone down. He reassures them that the air pocket means they are safe for now and need to remain calm and wait for rescue. Ava checks her phone but finds no signal underwater. She suggests swimming out through a hole in the plane, but Brandon warns that their survival chances are slim if they attempt that, so they should stay put. Danilo mentions that the pilots likely sent a distress signal before the crash, so help should arrive soon. Brandon then explains that they need backup oxygen as a precaution. Danilo says the plane has two emergency oxygen tanks in the back, but upon checking, he finds them empty. At that moment, Marty recalls that one of the passengers had a medical oxygen tank, prompting Brandon to volunteer to search for it. Before Brandon leaves, Marty asks him to bring her husband's hat. Brandon dives in, swimming through the corridor while checking the passengers who perished in their seats. He finds the hat and retrieves it, unaware of something swimming outside the window. He then locates the oxygen tank and takes it, but as he inspects the hole, he decides to swim further to look for additional supplies. To his horror, a shark suddenly attacks him, entering through the hole. The creature bites Brandon, and he struggles fiercely to fend it off. Meanwhile, the group becomes alarmed as they notice ripples in the water, signaling that something is amiss. Abruptly, the ripples vanish, and Brandon resurfaces, instructing the others to stay back while revealing severe wounds on his body. Breathing heavily, he hands over the oxygen tank and the hat, apologizing to Ava. Then, he is dragged back into the water, and the group witnesses the shark's tail as it devours him. Horrified, they retreat to the employee's area, 
and decide to follow Brandon's advice to keep waiting. Marty then offers to tend to Kyle's broken arm, explaining that she used to be a nurse during wartime, which is how she met her husband. Kyle screams in pain as Marty sets the bone back into place and she improvises a splint using thick magazines and bandages. Outside, a helicopter flies over the area, searching for the fallen plane. They have urgent orders because the governor's daughter is among the passengers, but they haven't spotted anything yet. Meanwhile, the survivors hear creaking sounds and the plane shifts slightly, indicating it might fall again soon. Jed starts becoming pessimistic and Danilo opens the oxygen tank Brandon brought back. Suddenly, they notice the water turning red, realizing that sharks have entered to feed on the drowned bodies. The plane shakes slightly, and they see a shark swim past the window, bumping into various parts of the aircraft. Rosa becomes terrified, but Ava reassures her, confident they will be rescued. However, the helicopter was still unsuccessful and ran low on fuel. The group monitors the water level and estimates they have about three to four hours before it reaches their location. Despite this, the continuous creaking and water leaking through the ceiling make them uncertain if the plane will hold up that long. Suddenly, the plane begins to slide downwards, causing rocks to fall until it gets stuck again. Fortunately, the group manages to hold on and no one is injured, but the new angle causes the water level inside the plane to rise more quickly. Realizing that the seabed isn't as stable as they had hoped, they agree they must swim out of the plane. They need to find a way to distract the sharks, and Rosa recalls learning in school that sharks dislike bubbles. However, they also face the challenge of holding their breath long enough. Suddenly, Kyle remembers that some passengers were traveling with scuba equipment. Danilo explains that the equipment is in the baggage hold, and there's a hatch that would provide access to it. Outside, the helicopter has only 15 minutes of fuel remaining. Just then, they spot plane parts floating on the surface. Two divers are deployed to start the search. It doesn't take them long to locate the plane. As they approach, the group inside begins signaling frantically at the window. One diver heads toward the hole while the other nears the window to assure the survivors that help is coming. Suddenly, a shark appears behind the diver at the window, but he doesn't notice it. The group inside tries to warn him, but when he turns around, he sees nothing. As he looks back at the plane, the shark attacks, dragging him down and killing him. The group hears disturbing noises above and sees the diver's leg floating past the window. Fearing for the other diver, they check the corridor but find no one, assuming he has also been killed. Outside, the helicopter is nearly out of fuel. With no other option, the helicopter crew has to leave, but at least they have the coordinates and backup is on the way. Back with the survivors, Ava suggests that if the other diver is dead, they could take his oxygen tank. She sees a shadow underwater, but can't be sure what it is. Jed decides to look closer by standing on the seats, but he slips and falls into the water. The group panics when they lose sight of him, but Jed surfaces laughing, revealing it was a prank. However, his amusement is short-lived as a shark quickly finds him, catching him in its toothy jaws. Jed struggles against the attack, and the group rushes to pull him back to safety, managing to rescue him from the shark. Unfortunately, they discover that Jed has lost a leg. Marty directs Rosa to stand behind the curtain while she tends to Jed's wound. Using seat belts, Marty makes a tourniquet to stop the bleeding. Jed cries, realizing he won't be able to participate in any more triathlons. Still determined to escape, Ava volunteers to search for the scuba equipment. Danilo opens the hatch, revealing that the baggage hold is also flooded. Undeterred, Ava dives in. Using a flare, she searches the area, unaware that something is swimming behind the bags. Eventually, she finds the scuba equipment, but is startled by an octopus and the flare goes out. The others begin to worry when they no longer see light, but Ava soon returns with the equipment. They open the bags to find diving suits and masks, but there are only four. Suddenly, they hear something hitting the plane and rush to check the window. No diver is around, so it must have been a shark. When they turn back, they find that Jed is already dead. A desperate Ava tries to perform chest compressions, but Marty pulls her back, making her see the reality. The plane then slides again, stopping quickly as the cockpit breaks and acts as an anchor. With water rising faster, they need to get out quickly. Recalling Rose's facts about sharks, they plan to use the small oxygen canisters from the emergency masks to blow bubbles and distract the sharks. 
However, swimming such a distance is still a challenge, and Kyle breaks down, revealing a childhood accident that left him traumatized and a poor swimmer. With Ava and Rose's encouragement, he agrees to try. The sharks continue to hit the plane and the ceiling begins to crack. The group starts changing into the diving suits and Marty volunteers to go without one, knowing that she would only slow everyone down at her age. After saying a final goodbye to Jed, the survivors enter the water, noticing that the plane is starting to slide again. Suddenly, the cockpit breaks off and falls into the abyss, signaling that the plane will soon follow. Marty asks Ava to go first and take Rosa with her. Ava and Rosa begin swimming through the corridor, but encounter a shark blocking their path. They quickly open an oxygen canister to scare it away. With the way cleared, they continue moving, soon joined by Kyle and Danilo. Marty watches the young people leave as the water rises inside the plane, accepting that she won't make it and waiting to be reunited with her husband. At that moment, Kyle panics and swims back to the small air pocket to catch his breath. Danilo tries to go back for him, but a shark suddenly emerges from the baggage hold and attacks Kyle, killing him within seconds. Terrified, Danilo swims to rejoin Rosa and Ava, who find the dead diver and take his tank to fill their lungs with air. Ava sends Rosa and Danilo through the hole with the tank. However, a shark blocks her path as she's about to leave. Ava swims back and freezes, causing the shark to swim inside without noticing her. Unfortunately, the shark's tail knocks off her mask. Ava then notices more sharks entering through the hole, prompting her to swim toward the front of the plane. The plane starts falling faster at that moment, and the water pressure hinders her movement. Thankfully, Ava manages to hold the seats and push through, exiting the front hole just before the plane plummets into the abyss. Ava begins swimming to the surface, but soon runs out of air and passes out. Her body naturally floats upwards, and as soon as she reaches the surface, she wakes up and gasps for air. Panicked, Ava doesn't see the others, but at that moment, helicopters arrive and rescue her. Danilo and Rosa have already been saved. When Rosa asks about her grandmother, Ava has to deliver the sad news. As a final farewell to her grandparents, Rosa throws her beloved plushie into the water before falling asleep in Ava's arms. What are your thoughts on the film's story? Please share your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications for more captivating stories like this. See you in the next video.